it's just gone 12 o'clock and uh, I'm here in Fetford. I'm taking the Angles Way extension, which is 14 miles, to get to the start of the Pedders Way, which is then 45 miles up to home next to the sea. And then I'll pick up the Norfolk Coast Path from Hunstanton to Cromer. This section I've done before. I know it can get extremely muddy in some places, so I'm hoping for the best. We have just had a big rainstorm, so I don't know what it's going to be like. So it took me exactly four hours to do the 15 mile extension of the Angles Way from Fetford to here at Nettleshall Heath. Uh, so yeah, 3.75 miles per hour for the first four hours uh, didn't stop. So I'm now on the Pedders Way. Uh, this runs for 46 miles up to Holm next to the sea and that's where I'll pick up the Norfolk Coast Path to go from Hunstanton to Cromer. Um, so it's a bit strange being back here. This was actually the first long trail that I ever attempted and <laughs> I ended up quitting on day two. I ended up with about four blisters, four or five blisters between both feet. I had shoes that were too small for me, pack that was way too big and the other two times I <laughs> quit because I was just bored. Um, so yeah, it's a strange being back here. The other times I've always been here in the summer and obviously this is February so it's completely different. Back there at the sign is also a big big part for me because that's where the Angles Way used to finish. Now I've hiked the Angles Way the whole way through. It used to be 77 miles then I added on the extension so it's another 15. Um, but yeah that was my first long distance trail that I ever actually successfully completed. So it was really cool being back there at the end of it again. Thank you. 
also every other time I've come through that section it's always been really really dry because it's been the summer and it's, I've never seen it flooded like that um, I, I'd seen a couple of YouTube videos of what <laughs> of what the flooding could be like there but you know I got there and I just thought the, 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 the winter route looks about a mile and a half to two miles long so do I do I really want to spend that long going on a diversion just to keep my feet dry or do I just put up with it and you know it's not that bad but hey so I survived it got up to nearly knee deep in the deepest part um, and obviously it's really cold it's the, it's the beginning of March now so uh, yeah <laughs> So I didn't really record much last night, but I, I ended up getting into camp just before six o'clock. I set up in a little woods and uh, had dinner, got to bed really, really quite early. Um, really good night's sleep, actually ended up being too warm and I had to take a layer off. And then I got woken up about five to the rain and I was like, oh no. Um, everything stayed dry, absolutely fine. So got packed away and I didn't leave until nearly seven. And uh, it's sort of been like on and off with a little bit of rain every here and now, so I haven't managed to get much footage. But uh, so far, it's going really well. I've um, been going about three hours, just over three hours today. I'm up to nearly 11 miles. It's probably more like three and a half hours. Um, yeah, 11 miles. And there's a McDonald's up here <laughs> in about three, four miles, which I'm really happy about because. I forgot my cheese, which I was going to have for lunch, so that's going to work out quite well. <laughs> I forgot just how long the road walks are on this section. You can probably see behind me. I've been on this road for absolutely ages, and uh, and I know that when I get the other side of Castle Acre, it's just miles of road walking again. So it's uh, quite the mental challenge to keep occupied when, when all there is to look at is just hedges. But uh, I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm back again. Uh, I've just left the McDonald's at Swatham. Uh, I've actually just got dropped back off here because the other day on day two of the hike, 
I got an unexpected phone call about a job offer and uh, I had to do three more courses before I could accept it. So I had to leave the trail and uh, I straight away had to do the course the next, the next day and then uh, a couple of days went by and I'd done another course. So now I'm back, back out here again and I've got enough time to do from here up to Cromer which is where the Norfolk Coast Path used to officially finish. Um, but I've got to finish then because I've got to get back to do another course uh, before I can start this job. So yeah, all went a little bit unexpected but I'm back here doing it again now. So I'll be finishing off in Cromer, which is where the Norfolk Coast Path used to finish. Um, they, they then extended it as part of like the England Coast Path down to Hopton, which is just above Lower Stoft, like Norfolk Suffolk border. Uh, it's about 46 miles and I'll, I'll save that for another day. I started a bit late, it's, uh, it's like half past 11 and I was planning on doing like 19 and a half miles, something like that. So I'm really going to have to go for it today. Castle Acre and uh, it's a lovely little bit there with like this little river that runs through and you can see like the remains of the old priory but uh, the real road walk begins the other side it's one relentless slog <sighs> So I'm about halfway down the road walk and uh, it's not quite as bad as what I remember. The last time I must have missed it, you could actually walk behind the hedge for the first like majority of it. Uh, so it's on the field and also it's like, it's like winter time still. So it's nowhere near as hot. Last time I was here in the middle of summer and that was dreadful. But uh, yeah, it's going really well today. go past and it honestly scared the life out of me. I've had my earphones in for like nearly an hour and haven't really bothered to look around because there's like no one here. And then yeah and then for some reason I just looked around and there's, there's three four by fours like just coming up to me. Oh, I jumped out of my pants. <laughs> So 
That part back there was quite interesting. Just came past uh, so this large field with like these big, big sort of mounds in them. And I uh, sort of thought, oh, what, what are they? And uh, just at the end there, there was a little, little information board that says that they're called barrows. And uh, basically, they're put there as like a ceremony. Um, but, like a prominent figure of the community would have been like burnt or buried there, along with like some of their possessions. Uh, what's interesting, it's from like 1770 BC and uh, it's from a like community, like I said, but um, but they've actually never found remains of any community in the area. So that's something, something a little bit different. It said there's about 600 or so all around in the area. for only about 15 minutes so far this morning found a really nice little wood to camp in last night had quite a lot of trouble setting my tarp up <laughs> it was really really soft soil so getting my tent stakes in was quite a quite a pain but got there in the end uh, really early night I was in bed like literally just before eight o'clock quite warm it was uh, it got really cold about half three four o'clock but then warmed up again, started raining a tiny bit as I woke up but I hit the trail just after 6 o'clock uh, maybe like 6.15, something like that yes, yeah, so I've only got 6 miles now until I reach the end of the Pedder's Way and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing the sea Start the two and a half miles to Hunstanton where the Norfolk Coast Path officially starts. <laughs> 